What's up guys, it's Chili. I make fan concepts for Age of Empires 4. Today we're trying something new, a video deep dive of my concept for the Koreans. Still figuring things out and I'd love to get your feedback on what works and doesn't work with this format. All of my concepts are available on my website, the link is in the description below. Without further ado, let's get into it, how I would design the Koreans in AoE 4. The Joseon Dynasty was arguably the most powerful dynasty in Korean history. Under the wise rule of enlightened kings like Sejong the Great, they made massive strides in technology. In 1592, the Koreans were faced with an invasion from Japan. Battle-hardened samurai, fresh from their Sengoku Jidai warring states period, cut a swath through Korea and threatened the fate of the nation. Only through strong leadership, ingenuity, and an unyielding spirit was Korea able to repel the invaders and guarantee a dynasty that would last for another three centuries. This concept will cover the period from 918 to 1598 CE. 918 is traditionally considered the beginning of the Goryeo dynasty. This dynasty unified the three kingdoms of classical Korea, Shilla, Bakje, and Kogoryo, under one banner. The modern name for Korea also comes from the Goryeo dynasty. By 1392, the Goryeo dynasty would give way to the Joseon dynasty, which famously defended against the Japanese during the Imjin War, resulting in a Korean victory in 1598. I designed Korea to be a one-star difficulty sieve. In fact, they play very similarly to the English, their focus is also on archery and defense, but with one key playstyle difference, and that's their focus on technology. Their first faction trait reflects this. Yangban Scholars refers to medieval Korea's Yangban social class. These were Korea's scholar gentry, the aristocratic nobles that ruled the government and also historically served as scientists that invented new technologies. In game, whenever Korea researches a new technology, they'll gain a free villager. If you're familiar with Age of Empires 3, the Italian civilization that was included in the Knights of the Mediterranean expansion has a very similar bonus. This trait means that if Korea can research a lot of technologies, they'll have a huge economic tempo advantage. Their next trait is the Seowon Academies, which serves as Korea's influence mechanic. Every faction in AoE 4 has some kind of influence mechanic in which you can get additional bonuses if you plan out your base properly. Korea's influence comes from the Seowon Academy, which historically were Confucian Academies that educated young Yangban students. In game, the CO1 costs 150 wood and is available in H2. It's a unique building and it houses a bunch of unique technologies. Any other buildings within the CO1's influence will have their technology costs reduced by 20%. This synergizes well with the free villager that Korean players will get upon researching a new technology, so players are incentivized to carefully plan out their base layout to maximize this influence bonus. Their next trait is the Tiger Hunter Corps. The Chakugapsa were an elite group of tiger hunters tasked to deal with the abundance of tigers terrorizing Korea's villages. Only the bravest hunters would be able to hunt down these tigers, and that made them prime candidates for Joseon's elite guard. In game, the Koreans will have access to the Tiger Slayer Unique Armored Archer unit as soon as the Feudal Age. And being an armored archer, this makes them exceptional at fighting off other archers and spearmen, and give the Koreans a unique edge in H2 skirmishes. Korea is known for being a land of fortresses, which makes sense considering the numerous invasions they've had to repel. Whether it's nomadic invaders from the northern frontier or Woku pirates from the southern coastline, Korean kingdoms have invested heavily in building fortresses all over their country, and the naturally mountainous terrain has made many of these fortresses virtually impregnable. In game, Korea will have a defensive bonus, their keeps and outposts will have additional attack range and vision, scaling with the age that they're in. This ties in with the theme of the civilization being a long-range archer civilization. Lastly, Korea will have access to the Huacha emplacement. Huacha literally translates to fire cart. They were a medieval form of rocket artillery, and launched the Singijeon rocket arrow. This was a technology originally stolen from the Chinese, but repurposed and improved upon by Korean alchemists. While they could be devastating weapons on the battlefield, they primarily served as castle defenses during the Japanese invasion, and are credited in playing a large role in helping Korea win the war. In game, these will function very similar to the nest of bees from China, but with some slight differences. So overall, Korea will only have a small handful of faction traits, and only two unique units. This is to help keep the faction relatively easy to pick up and play, keeping the faction at a 1 star difficulty rating. Moving on to their military production, Koreans will have access to the standard roster, archery range, stable, barracks, and siege workshop. In the archery range, Koreans will have access to standard units like the archer, the crosswoman, and the hand cannoneer. The tiger slayer is the unique armored archer I mentioned earlier. What I hadn't mentioned is that this unit continues to be iconic in pop culture today. The Chakogapso were recently featured in a BTS manhua, as well as mentioned in a Netflix show, The Kingdom. In order to balance out the fact that they're armored, the tiger slayers will have relatively short range and will take bonus damage from cavalry. 
similar to how the Ottoman Janissaries take bonus damage from archers. Archery has historically been pretty prominent in Korean society. During the Imjin War, the Japanese samurai severely outclassed the Korean melee infantry. They also brought with them a ton of well-drilled arquebus gunners known as the Tanegashima Ashigaru. Korea's advantage, however, was in the bow. Their range and deadliness was able to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with Japanese guns. Even today, archery is of prime importance in Korea. The nation regularly takes home gold medals for archery at the Olympics. Reflecting this, Korean archers will be a little bit better than most other factions. Starting in age 2, they can research the arrow shoots technology, which gives all archers increased range. Historically, the Pyeongjeon was an arrow shoot that could be loaded with a smaller arrow. When fired, the smaller arrow will travel the full length of the shoot, gaining increased range. This also has the advantage of not giving your opponent an arrow to shoot back, as the shorter Pyeongjeon arrow needs an arrow shoot to be effective. In H3, Korea will be able to research the reflex bow technology. This is in reference to the famous Gakkong, Korea's national bow, historically a very powerful composite reflex bow. In game, this will give Korean archers plus one attack. The Korean stables is relatively simple. While the Gogoryeo kingdom had armored cataphracts in the past, by the time of the Joseon dynasty, cavalry was much less emphasized. That being said, Korea will still have access to both the horsemen and the armored lancer units. In the castle age, Korea will be able to research the iron flail technology, which gives lancers increased range and armor penetration. Historically, the Pyonggong was a devastating weapon that allowed Korean cavalrymen to get around enemy shields. The barracks for Korea is also pretty basic. A standard roster of spearmen and men-at-arms are available. Starting in the Castle Age, however, Korea will be able to research the Dangpa Trident technology. Historically, the wings of the Trident helped spearmen avoid getting the weapon stuck in their opponent. In-game, Korean spearmen will be able to apply a slowing debuff to enemies that they attack, giving their archers free reign to fire upon their encumbered enemy. Lastly, the Siege Workshop also has a standard roster, save for the Huacha. This unit is very similar to the Nest of Bees from China. It's a bit more expensive and the individual shots deal less damage, but it'll fire more rockets and it'll have greater range. Age of Empires 2 players might recall the Korean War Wagon unique unit. I personally couldn't find evidence to any strong use of War Wagons by Korea, however. I assume it was actually a reference to the Huacha. In the Imperial Age, Korea will have access to the Chong Tong technology, which improves their bombard range. Korea and Japan had very different naval doctrines during the Imjin War. The Japanese were excellent melee infantry, and so they focused on boarding enemy ships and forcing hand-to-hand -hand combat. This is similar to how the Romans fought the Carthaginians during the First Punic War. Korea, however, had the advantage of the Chongtong Cannon, which allowed them to shoot down Japanese ships before they could close in. These weapons were what secured Admiral Yi Sun-shin's legendary victories and allowed him to beat the navies that were ten times the size of his own. Next, we'll take a look at the unique technologies available at the Seowon. In H2, Korea will be able to research Hangul script which allows structures within the Seowon Academy influence to research 50% faster. This synergizes with the free villagers that Koreans get from researching new technologies. Historically, the Korean language used Chinese characters for writing, but this was hard to learn and inaccessible for the common people. King Sejong is credited with inventing Hangul, a new writing system that made Korean incredibly easy to learn. To this day, in fact, Korean is still a relatively easy language to pick up because of this invention. In H3, they'll get access to the Righteous Army technology. Righteous armies were people's militias, Irregular forces called upon to resist foreign invasion. They were comprised of peasants, scholars, government workers, and Buddhist monks. Righteous armies first appeared during the Khitan and Mongol invasions from the north, but they played an especially big role in resisting Japanese invasions during both the Imjin War and later during Japanese occupation prior to World War II. In game, since every faction has some kind of buffing aura, Righteous Army will also be a buffing aura that will increase the health of all Korean units standing near a keep. This is similar to the English Network of Castles bonus. By age 4, they'll be able to research explosive arrows. This is a bit of a fantasy ability. It's got some historical basis from the Sigajon arrow that I mentioned earlier, but it's mostly inspired by this scene in the movie, The Admiral Roaring Currents. This ability will make the Tiger Slayer's next shot deal AoE damage like a Chinese Grenadier. Lastly, we'll take a look at Korea's landmarks. Starting with the Fuel Age, we have the Bulguksa Temple. This was a beautiful Buddhist temple founded in the 8th century in the Kingdom of Shilla. Buddhism first entered Korea as early as 372 CE, and has had a strong influence on Korean society ever since. In game, the temple functions similar to the Delhi Sultanate's House of Learning, providing access to a bunch of unique technologies only available within this landmark. Since Korea gains free villagers from technologies, they'll always want more technologies to research. The texts available in the Bulguksa temple are as follows. In the feudal age, they'll get access to heated floors, which were known as ondol in Korean. This tech doubles the population that houses provide, and also refrigeration, referring to the Sok Bingu, an ancient Shilla underground ice house. This tech allows villagers to generate a bit of food while they're mining. In the Castle Age, they'll get access to the Rattan Shield, which makes men at arms cheaper and gives them additional ranged armor. Age of Empires 2 players might remember the Rattan archers that were Vietnam's unique unit. I couldn't find any historical evidence for Vietnam using Rattan archers, but we do know that Joseon imported Rattan shields from China. Not only were Rattan shields cheaper to make and longer lasting, 
but they are also so durable that they've been recorded to have deflected bullets. The last tech at the temple is called the self-defense pistol. This is a neat little bit of history. The Se Chong Tong was essentially an arrow bolt propelled by a small packet of gunpowder. It became adopted by civilians living on the frontier and became one of the first self-defense pistols in history. Korea's other feudal landmark is the Stone Pagoda. This landmark generates stone starting at a rate that's even less than the Malian Mansa Quarry. The stone generation can be upgraded twice, however, providing more stone while also giving Korea some extra free villagers from the technologies. Historically, the Gyeongcheonsa Pagoda was erected in the 14th century and is considered one of Korea's national treasures. Moving on to the Castle Age, the Exalted Gate was historically called the Namdaemun, the Southern Gate into Seoul. It's a siege workshop that has discounted unit costs. Uniquely, it has two production slots, allowing players to do two things at a time, including training siege engines or researching technologies. The Jinju Fortress guarded Jola Province from the Japanese. It's a keep with a special ability. When activated, a horn blows and 15 irregulars will rush out and attack all nearby enemies. This functions similar to the Rus's Kremlin militia except that they are uncontrollable and do not cost population space. In the Imperial Age, Korea will be able to build the Hall of Worthies. This is a research institute set up by Sejong the Great to attract scholars and make discoveries. In game, it functions as both a university and a Seowon. It doubles the discount on technologies provided by the Seowon from 25% to 50%. The other Imperial landmark is the Gyeongbokgong Palace. It's a keep with a Huachan emplacement, but each time an enemy unit is killed near this keep, it'll gain bonus health up to a maximum amount. Historically, Historically, the Gyeongbokgong Palace was the residence of the Joseon royalty. Lastly, the wonder for Korea is the Hongyongsa, a 9th century wooden pagoda. For a time, it was the tallest structure in all of Asia, before it was ultimately burned down by the Mongols in 1238 CE. This wonder also made an appearance in AoE 2 as the wonder for the Koreans. So overall, Korea is a defensive archer civilization that has a heavy focus on researching technologies to gain economic tempo over their opponents. More technologies equals more villagers equals profit. I'd be most excited to see what players do with Tiger Slayers, especially in the Feudal Age. Something tells me an armored archer would be pretty game-changing. It would also be pretty cool to see how players organize their bases to optimize the CO1 Academy influence. And that concludes my concept for Korea. What did you think? How would you design the Korean faction in AoE 4? What kinds of units, buildings, and technologies did I miss? And just how bad was my Korean pronunciation? pronunciation. I'd love to know what you think in the comments below. All I know is that Korea has a wonderfully rich amount of medieval history to draw from, and the fact that they're bar none the best competitive RTS players out there signals to me that Relic and Microsoft would be shooting themselves in the foot if they didn't have something in the works for getting Korea into AoE 4.